to the digital segment of the Ethical Enterprise Conference 2023, The Big Shift, where we interview a series of inspiring leaders, entrepreneurs and founders who are making a huge impact and embracing the big shift. Today, I would like to welcome Stuart Horrocks, the founder of Artshine. Uh, welcome, Stuart, and what a lovely name your enterprise has got. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm the co-founder alongside uh, Vin Van Lam and Artshine has been going for uh, about 10 years or so um, with the idea of, of helping creatives uh, shine, if you like, and, and do the things they want to do and, and create what they, they need to create. Tell us a little bit more about Artshine. How does how does it work? What, 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 you know, uh, it, it works with obviously people that are interested in this in the space of creativity. Um, so, how how does the organisation work? Is it a profit and offer profit? How do people join Artshine and how does it work? Yeah. Okay, um, so we work as a um, a for purpose enterprise, a, a social enterprise. Um, we're set up to. Um, uh, empower and inspire uh, creatives. So right across the, the creative um, spectrum, artists, designers, surface designers, web designers, writers, any anyone in that creative space. Uh, and the idea is, is we primarily provide um, education. So we run uh, launch pad and accelerator programs um, focused on the commercial side. Um, so we help people uh, identify the opportunities they, they can um, uh, they have to um, earn income and create sustainable income for themselves and support them themselves, their their art and, and their families over over time. So uh, we're not an art school. Um, art for art's sake, I would argue, is is critical and something that's desperately under supported and underfunded uh, in our society at the moment. Um, so there's a lot more that can be done um, for the arts generally. Um, but Artshine is is unapologetically uh, commercial and we're focused on helping creatives find the income uh, that supports them in their work. And we do that by um, education and coaching uh, and running a 12 to 18 month uh, launch pad and accelerator program that would help a, an artist build an audience, um, build their, um, uh, their portfolios and identify opportunities to, to earn residual streams of, of income. Um, and through that um, that accelerator program, we, we use what we call action learning, uh, learning by doing. So in the process of identifying audience, we'll help them, you know, uh, build their websites, get out on, on social media and, and start to talk more. Uh, we've got a number of uh, gallery venues um, around Sydney. So we help with um, uh, establishing exhibitions and getting artists actually out there and, and selling their work in the the traditional way through through um, gallery spaces or introducing them to galleries. How do you talk to a gallery owner? How do you get your stuff um, um, shown? Uh, and then we also uh, work through um, licensing. Art licensing is is probably one of the major ways uh, a commercial artist can earn residual income and earn income through their work. So you've got the original work and the artist owns the copyright to that, but they can sell um, the rights to use that image on Products like this shirt, for example, is, is one of our artists' uh, products and um, uh, crockery, cutlery, linens, all those sorts of things. So we uh, go overseas now. Uh, we're starting to go back again. Uh, three or four times a year, we'll go to different trade shows and represent um, our artists and, and help them get licensing deals. Um, and of course, show them how they can do that themselves as well. Um, and then we go all the way through to commercialization. So we'll actually invest in our own artists and, um, and create products that we then wholesale uh, and, and retail as well. So uh, uh, yeah, that's in a nutshell kind of what we do. So it's, it's, it's quite a broad, broad business. Yeah, it's, it, there's quite a lot. Uh, it, what it seems to me is that um, there might be people coming out of art school perhaps that don't really know all these extra, you know, how to commercialize your art. Is that what you're saying? There's, you know, there's a lot of artists out there that perhaps have no idea, you know, I'm a great artist, but what do I do with this um, apart from? Exactly. It's, 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 um, and thankfully we've, we've got a government now who's, who's starting to talk a little bit about it and start to explore what it means to be a creative professional in, in society and how can you actually be recognized and valued as an artist? 
Um, unfortunately, that still comes down to economic terms, and it's it's kind of like how much do you earn and and what do you sort of contribute to the economy is, is still very much the limited argument that we're having. Um, but what we do, and we tend to work more mainly, um, we do have some younger people um, straight out of school, but most of our clients um, tend to be people who are actually making a transition from full-time employment or or some form of employment into um, self-employment, working for themselves. They're people who have uh, perhaps had other careers um, and now are going back to art. The type of people who are probably told when they were growing up or when they were at school is no, don't do that. You can't play music. You can't be a painter. You can't be an artist. Go and get a real job. So, you know, we've got ex-solicitors, ex-doctors, you know, project managers. Um, we've got a lot of uh, graphic designers, people that work in TV and all those sort of ancillary sort of areas as well. Um, as well as people, you know, who, who are just sort of starting out and, and different people who have, you know, recently arrived into Australia and, um, you know, various, you know, Indigenous communities. So it's it's a, a broad, broad range of, of, of people that, uh, that can come in and, and benefit from the programs that we offer. So amazing that people can find uh, that there's value in that. You know, like you said, a lot of them, uh, you know, go and become a doctor or a lawyer because art is not as important, yet we are surrounded by it everywhere, <laughs> every day. And people don't realise the importance yes, of it visually in, exactly. in everything. Now, tell me, how, how did you start, you and your co-partner? What, what were you doing before? Were you yeah. one of those refugees, corporate refugees or...? Yeah, well, we sort of dip in and out of um, of corporate life. That's um, one of the things we did to support ourselves while we were uh, bootstrapping this this social enterprise was to actually dip in and out of, of corporate roles. And um, we're privileged to be able to, to do that and, and be able to sort of earn ancillary income. And it's one of the things that we talk to our you know clients about too. It's like finding the ways to um, support yourself and, and build things yourself. Um, is is important. So we both have had, I guess, probably Google us and, and look up LinkedIn is is the easiest answer to that question. Broadly speaking, we come from a small business and service background. Um, worked in arts and, and design. Um, my main background has been in small business um, development. Working with, um, I've been fortunate to have a, a couple of great mentors um, in the Sydney social enterprise, not for profit space, one who is involved heavily with the business enterprise centres. Um, so I guess a lot of my experience comes from uh, working in and around NICE programs, the new enterprise incentive scheme, um, which I'm not sure if you're aware of, of it as a, a program. It's a federal government program. Um, so we set up more than a decade ago to help people set up a small business um, and it provides funding and, and um, education um, around that and supports people for years. So I've helped hundreds of, of new start businesses through that program. Um, and then also being privileged to work with uh, Steve Lawrence at Work Ventures as well was a real eye opener for me in, in, in the social enterprise space. And that's what got me switched on to social enterprise uh, 20, 20 odd years ago as, as a, a, a format for, for business. So um, for me, I kind of find it challenging sometimes that we've got these distinctions between for-profit business and not-for-profit business and social enterprise and for-purpose where, you know, my kind of attitude is is if you're in an enterprise, you need to be doing all the things that support that enterprise and that includes supporting your communities, making sure it's, you know, doing the right things for the environment and so on. So it's, it's kind of a, um, yeah, blanket, blanket sort of statement, that one. Yeah, I, I agree with you uh, as well. But that's for most of the people that understand that a business is to create good. Uh, but uh, I think the model exists in particular for those that perhaps uh, don't know how or, or trying to even get the larger corporate to change the, the way they exactly. operate. When the good is defined as, um, yeah, shareholder value and, and profits for a shareholder, it's, it's, it's quite limiting. Yeah. So what, what, tell us, what was the pivotal moment? When did you go, I'm going to go from what I'm doing now to creating Art Shine? Because yeah. that's a big move for a lot of people, going from your sort of hobby uh, passion to moving to a full-time job and how yeah. to make money. Yeah. And and that's that's kind of what we've done and kind of what we, we show our clients to do as well. I don't know if there was one particular um, moment. There's probably an accretion of, of different things that sort of happened over time. Um, probably one of the key moments for me when I was at a, a gallery exhibition 
and I was looking at this amazing, I was looking across the room and I saw this uh, amazing photograph. There was, there was two photographs actually, a series um, of like sunflowers in a field. And I was just like blown away. This is just amazing. And I got up close and um, they weren't actually photographs. They were pencil drawings. Um, and they were just so detailed and so incredible. And then I look at the, the price tag um, and I won't mention the artist and I won't mention the price. Suffice to say that the artist had valued their work and their time um because i spoke with the artist and how long did it take you to create that it's, it's amazing um seven cents an hour basically is is what it was priced at and it, i was just like you know that's just insane for you know for, for what it is and, and that's one of the probably the key moments for me when it's like you know what there's some there's some opportunity here to to help people understand not the art side of thing or the creation side of thing, but how do you price yourself? How do you place yourself? How do you how do you do the things you need to do to actually earn more than seven cents an hour for for the work that you do? Um, for Vin and we sort of we've been working together. We, we've been together as a, a couple for more than twenty years. We've worked in a number of businesses together um, over that time. It was moving from more of the small business consultancy and, and helping people run their business to doing stuff with creatives because they're more interesting and more challenging and uh it's more rewarding um I, I think that's where it where it comes down to it's just the rewards and the challenges um are, are so much greater in in this space and the people you meet are, are so fantastic yeah it's interesting you say how um you know we always talk about slave labor and people getting underpaid in overseas communities and developing countries it happens here with the artists it's so sad um but uh yeah it's great that you identify that moment and that that made you change now i know that during COVID, uh, a lot of the uh, many many groups in particular in the creative industry really really struggled um I'll, you know i, I know from because I know people that were musicians, for example, and gave up that job and decided to go and work for a council or a business and the same with artists. How did Artshine survive that? Um, and how did you succeed? How, how did that happen for, for your industry? Yeah, well, I guess I'll, I'll separate us from, from the wider industry. And, and there was a lot of and we're still seeing it now and i think this year is probably going to be worse in a lot of ways than the, the previous years because a lot of the supports that were around in the previous couple of years just don't exist now so i think the next 12 months are going to be particularly tough um we were i was really quite worried we, we came back from new york we were at a trade show in new york uh representing over 50 different australian artists uh, in new york just before uh the borders shut so we came in back home probably about a week before everything sort of started to get serious um and you know people were well aware of what was going on and that was quite a moment for us and we were not very um certain or sure of what was going to happen for, for us and our industry um we actually came out of it quite well and we, we've actually grown through the COVID period um we didn't gain any new business a lot of the, the things we were doing um overseas had to naturally stop um, we were still working with our, our clients um, and, and helping them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And that's, that's where uh, a lot of us were, were struggling around, you know, not being able to do the things we normally do to get the income. So that was, that was really challenging. But again, we're so privileged to be able to sort of help and support um, our, our clients in, in that time um, as best we could. Uh, in terms of us as an organisation, we pivoted to, because we couldn't travel overseas, we actually invested in some of our artist work and um, uh, created products that we planned to sell throughout Australia, so as retail products. Um, that became extra challenging because even within Australia, we got stuck with the New South Wales, Victorian border um, closures and couldn't do a lot of that as well. But we were fortunate in that we were able to move online um, so a lot of the overseas clients we were actually working with, um, because they couldn't go and do the trade shows and get um, um, and see and speak to new people, they were coming to us and saying, okay, well, what have you got? So we were able to support our, our artists by, by getting their work out there um, on, online. So um, it actually helped us pivot to this, as everyone has, this, this sort of 
um, hybrid way of working now, and a lot of our work is is being done online and and through through um, um, Zoom and digital forms. Um, that said, we are starting to go back to the face to face meetings, which um, everybody's been hanging out for. Thank you. Can I just go back to one thing you said before uh, in terms of uh, COVID that you think we haven't seen really there's going to be more of the creative industry that's going to struggle. Why, why do you say that? What have you seen? Well, it's I, I guess I'm looking at the economy overall and a lot of the um, the, the rent, um, your rent freezes and so on have, have stopped. Um, uh, a lot of businesses are now sort of faced with the, the the prospect of not only having to, you know, generate revenue this year, but to fill the hole that's been created for the last two years. A lot of enterprises, a lot of um, entities have been working off their, um, you know, their, their savings and, and you know, all, all the various, you know, capital that they've, they've put aside for other things. So I think everybody's running on, on very empty tanks at the moment. And uh, um, I don't think the government has got the same level of um, um, willingness to support in as as they did in the past with COVID, we've kind of decided it's it's a it's endemic. It's not pandemic anymore, and off we go, business as usual. So if, if you're part of a, a disadvantaged group or if if, if you're um, still struggling, it, it's kind of the world's decided to to move on a little bit now. So I think we have to be mindful of that. Yeah, it's true. It was like uh, you know, COVID finished and. There you go. Now uh, off you go. <laughs> Start your business again, and it's not as simple as that, is it? Yeah, it's exactly. like uh, it's like uh, having to redo everything again. So now you're a social enterprise, um, and just explain why it's important for your business to be a social enterprise. But also, what impact do you have? What is the you know? If you had to say I'm a social enterprise and have this impact, what is that that you that Artshine? Uh, what impact Artshine has? Yeah, I guess well, it's 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 hard to, to quantify and measure. We, we've been working one on one with a lot of people um, over the last ten years, and uh, what we've done um, since I've joined the business full time um, last year is is we're starting to really scale and, and build that up. So we'll be able to get some good measures uh, of impact. But it really is about working and empowering with individuals um, to to help them. Uh, create the success that they want to see in their life, whatever that means for them. And, and I guess that's a, you know, a very individualistic sort of goal. What does success mean to you? And it means different things for, for different people. Uh, but it's really helping people to, um, in that economic development space, to, you know, build the, the the foundations and the structures they need to support themselves and, and their families. So. Um, we, we can sort of we, we can we can look at individuals and say you know we can see see their their pathways and we can see how they've moved from where they were to, to where they are and we've seen how people um you know build confidence in themselves and build confidence in their abilities and, and get out there so um it's it's a really rewarding space to to work in thank you so what barriers do you see um for people entering in this creative space or you know what mistakes do people make? You know, is it is it you know, people think it's great? You know, there's creativity involved, uh, but obviously it's more than that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you can go through some of those uh, barriers or some of those mistakes that people make, yeah, yeah, I guess to, it's probably it's never been easier in in, in terms of, of creativity and and being a, a creative industries professional right across the board. You know, it's, it's probably never been. Um, in, in you know the, the the time scale in human history, it's probably never been an easier time for people to get out and get out there and and, and do things. That said, it's probably never been a harder time too because everybody's got the ability to do it. You know, in, in the past, you know, you had to have a printing press or you had to own a newspaper or you had to um, get yourself a, a record contract or um, you know get yourself on the casting couch and get yourself into that breakthrough movie. Now. You can you can do that all through the tools that we all have, well, the majority of us have have access to. Um, that said, though, everybody is trying to do that, so there's never been a more noise and um, more more challenge around doing that. So, um, I, I guess in in terms of the the mistakes people make, I, I think 
I don't, I don't know if, if mistakes is the right word because you, you learn from all your mistakes, right? But um, the, uh, there's a lot of challenges and it, it is about probably that persistence and being very clear in your goals. Um, I think recognizing that not everyone is starting from the, the same starting point. So that's one of the things that Artshine we're very clear about is is not everyone's had the same opportunities as everyone else. And, and how do we um, work to sort of level that playing field a bit and give give people the, the tools and resources and the things they need to actually get to um, those same levels as everyone else? Because there's plenty of talented people out there that um, just don't see um, just don't see the opportunities that that less talented people might uh, might have ready access to. So um, starting to break some of those um, barriers and you know the, the idea of you know you need to be a certain type of artist to get a gallery showing. Well, why don't you set up your own gallery or start your own exhibition? Those those sorts of things. So uh, yeah, that, that's probably the, the the biggest challenge is is being able to back yourself and and invest in yourself. Yeah, that's that's true. So, for example, uh, let's assume I'm uh, now giving up uh, my career here as uh, running events and <laughs> with social enterprises, and I want to start doing some pottery <laughs> or something like that. So, what would you? What? How would you guide me? What? What would that look like for me? Well, so, if someone wants to... do what Sorry. you love. Yeah. Do what you love. Do what's important, and I guess this is the thing. I'm not. I'm not talking about pottery as a hobby. If you want to do pottery as a hobby, go for it. Yeah. Um, but if if you want to be a be a potter or, or something, that's you know that that's decades in in the making. So um, you know we we're not here to teach you how to be a potter. We're here to teach you if you, if you've got those skills and experiences, and it's something you're passionate about. Um, and want to earn income from, or well, mm. how do you do that? So uh, we've got a couple who of clients who work in, in that industry. And pottery is a, a little challenging because um, it's it's very much an individual thing. It's it's like you make one piece at a time and yes, you can, you know, can, you can make a, a few and put them in a fire, but you're never going to become um, industrial in the sense of, you know, a Wedgwood or something, unless you start to um, turn it into something different. So uh, the first thing we talk about um, working with Art Shine is, what what are your goals? What, what what do you want? What does success mean to you? Um, and that's very different for very different people. We've had some clients who have sort of said, "Well, what that means is I want to be able to afford a um, a holiday with with my children once a year and work in a part time job." And for others, it has been, "I want to create an enterprise that you know build you know makes things and does things separate from me and my art." So they've now got you know warehouses and you know that they manufacture and and do things and create products quite separate from their artwork that they still do as an expression and, and what they want to say and, and contribute to the art, which is very different to the business they run, which has some foundings in art and, and, and design, but um, is very, very different. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah, and that, that's great um, because you can provide also, like you said, you can provide feedback that's, well, you probably have to go back a step rather than forward right yeah. uh, and 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 then go from there see if that's what you actually want to do or if we've, it can be we've done. had that with clients and, and that's one of the reasons we actually started to work with people who are mainly transitioning from full-time employment uh to self-employment because we had so many clients that came to us and said oh i've quit my job two years ago i've spent all my money i've got nothing left you know can you help me and it's like well mm. You know, we can we can encourage you and, and keep going, but it's it's kind of a hard hard road to to hoe when when you you've you've got that got that um, situation. True. And so it's, it's working with people to identify the skills that they have to to create the incomes they they need. Mm. So, if um, what would you say some tips uh, for social entrepreneurs to succeed? You know, some some you know you might have some tips, something that you've done yourselves. What what would you say? Uh, persistence and focus, I think, are probably the the two things. Um, you, you you need to be um, dedicated to to your idea. Um, you need to be receptive to feedback. Um, the, but there is, uh, I, I think, it's fair to say, a, a level of of blindness and pig headedness that comes with with establishing and and running your own social enterprise or any enterprise for for that matter. You need to believe in what you do, and you need to have faith in yourself and and keep persevering um despite all, all the setbacks and um 
uh, I guess I had a great mentor once and, and sort of said, you know, you're on the right track when your problems keep getting bigger. Um, and that, that's something that sort of, it, it, it does, it, it, it kind of, it kind of fits because as we've gone on, it's, it's like our problems have got bigger, you know, there's more zeros at the end of some of the problems now, uh, in terms of, you know, money you need or things you need to do and, um, confronting and, and, um, and, um, uh, confronting bigger challenges and, and bigger problems and, and overcoming them is, is I think what, what keeps us going and, and, um, uh, keeps us focused on what it is that we want to achieve and knowing why we do what we do uh, and what the results of what we do mean for ourselves. Because let's be honest, there's a selfishness in it. I love being able to uh, look at people we've worked with and gone, look at them now, look at where they've gone, look at how they've, you know, changed their circumstances and done different things and created something that's just amazing. And being a part of that is just such a, it's a privilege. So there is a selfishness in, in doing what I do because uh, that's really cool. But to be able to um, uh, to uh, to help people and, and and create that for, for people is is really good, uh, and staying focused on that keeps us going. I think. Yeah, and I suppose um, I get that idea of selfishness. You know, you want to see people succeed, uh, but it's equally important when you when you can give that feedback to people that perhaps this is not going to work. You know, before they make in any further moves into that direction. So having said that, what are some of the biggest mistakes or challenges you have encountered from the day you started your your business to now? What, you know, that I'm not saying that you would have done differently because like you said, you learn from your mistakes, yeah. but that you know there were definitely big mistakes, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess the, the probably the, the the biggest thing I've I've learned is is being quicker to to pull the pin on something it's like you've got lots of, of different ideas and you, you've and again we you know we talked about the passion we talked about that focus and desire and, and the, the really the then it's it's essential that you're able to persevere and, and stick with things but sometimes you've got to recognize that you know what that probably wasn't the best idea and we need to stop it now because you know it's causing pain and it's it's causing bleeding and we need this, the bleeding to stop you know um, so, so that's that's probably the biggest lesson is is being able to take a step above things and be able to look at it from that sort of big picture view, um, rather than that uh, attached space and be able to say that was a good idea, good on you for trying, but let's stop it now before it it, it doesn't it works less than it did before. That's really difficult, isn't it? Because there's a bit of pride involved in that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So tell us, how do people find out about you? Um, so you said the best time to contact Art Shine is if you have an idea, perhaps, and you're transitioning, rather than when you're desperately looking to 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 start something, but you you know in a situation. But where do they find you? Yeah, well, we've mainly worked word of mouth, and and people have, have found us um, just and and come to us. We've started doing now. Um, uh, cohorts. So instead of working one on one with individuals over the last year, we've working with groups of, of people. So we've been able to intake and, and help a lot more people every year. So um, next year, 2023, um, we're actually starting um, terms uh, and, and doing that. So um, yeah, you'll be able to just come come to our website, artshine.com and um, make an application and, and, and away we go. Um, so we work primarily with um, creatives in the, at the moment, most of the commercial streams are in the, the visual arts, surface design, um, graphic design. Um, we, we can work with, with other artists as well. So it's really about, you know, what, what people's goals are. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Sounds, uh, sounds amazing. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, and I hope to meet you in person one day. <laughs> yeah yeah thank thank you Stuart. well done uh and all the best uh for art china in the future okay thank you thank you very much okay.